Hey guys, this is Miss Sherry, and we're going to finish up chapter two of Ida B by Katherine Hennigan. Here we go. I rested my head on one of the limbs. I closed my eyes and got ready to listen with my insides because that's what you do with this particular tree. I was sitting there for quite a while and not minding a bit. The branch against my face was warm and smooth and it felt like nothing could go wrong that day. I was ready to believe that Paul E.T. had just been working his mischief when all of a sudden I got a cold, cold feeling inside of me and I saw a dark cloud at the front of my closed eyes. And I got a message, but not in words. That tree lets you know things. Those things go into your heart and then they find their way to, up to your head. And once they get there, they turn into words. At least that's how I think it works. So, if I had to give it words, this is what I'd say the tree was telling me. Hard times are coming. Well, my eyes flipped open so I wouldn't have to look at the darkness anymore. I jumped out of the tree, almost landing on Rufus, the saliva factory, because I felt like I'd gotten a shock right through me. What? I ask, what did you tell me? But the old tree is slow to speak and it doesn't repeat itself. It just stood there like those apple trees had before. Are you telling me that Polly T is right? Is trouble really headed my way? But I knew I wouldn't hear anything back. And on a day like that, with the sun shining, four hours till dinner, and seven more items on my list of fun stuff to do, I did the only sensible thing. I decided that that old tree might not be thinking as well as it had a few years ago. Agreeing with Polly T was a sure sign that something was wrong, but I wanted to be respectful and not say any insulting words. Well, thanks for helping me out, I yelled as I started running down, down the hill, over the brook, through the orchard, and all the way home. I finished my drawings in my room, safe and out of the way, just in case the storm did blow through. Except for a dinner that included lima beans and Brussels sprouts, nothing bad happened that night or even the next day. We did have a storm with lightning and thunder a couple of days later. It was a wild ruckus outside with the leaves and the branches blowing by and Lulu hiding under the bed trying to pretend that she wasn't scared. Just curious about all those dust balls. And that, I believed, was what all those trees were talking about. No need, I figured, to bother my head about it again. Okay, guys, that finishes chapter two.